everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk about Costume College, which is, in my opinion, one of the best events that you can go to as a costumer. I'm going to address things like, what is it? How much does it cost to attend? Why should you attend? What all happens at Costume College? How do you register for the event or for classes? And so much more. And the reason that I'm doing this video today is because registration for this year's Costume College, which takes place July 28th through August 1st, opens one week from today on April 2nd. This video is mostly targeted towards people who have either never attended Costume College or who have maybe only attended once or twice and want to learn more before they attend again. But for those of you who have attended, if you're still willing to watch, I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments, maybe like anything I missed or also why you enjoy attending. And for people new to Costume College, if you still have any questions after watching this video, please do leave them in the comments and I will be sure to address them. I do want to say before we really get started that I am not affiliated with Costume College in any other capacity besides attendee and occasional teacher. I don't help run or organize the event, so all of the information that you'll be hearing in this video is just from my personal experience or from the Costume College website, which I have linked down below in the description. And since Costume College has not been held since 2019, I do apologize if anything winds up changing for this year compared to in years past. But anyway, let's get on with the video. So first off, what is Costume College? Costume College is an awesome event that is typically held the last weekend of July or occasionally the first weekend of August. And it takes place in Woodland Hills, California, which is just north of Los Angeles. It's hosted by Costumers Guild West, or CGW for short, which is the Southern California Costuming Guild. For the entire time I've attended, which has been every year from 2011 through 2019, it has been held at the Warner Center Marriott in Woodland Hills, California. Costume College technically runs Thursday evening through Sunday, though there is always an additional event on Monday, which I will talk more about in a little bit. Registration for Costume College includes the full weekend, meaning you don't buy tickets for individual days like you might at a con. Costume College is for anyone interested in costuming, so that means costume makers, costume wearers, historical costumers, cosplayers, even people who just work in costuming for film or theater. On Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, from about 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., there are a ton of different classes that are offered on all sorts of different elements of costuming some that are lecture style, most of which were called unlimited classes in the past, and some that are hands-on workshops, which were previously called limited classes. This year, they'll just be called lectures for the ones that are open to anyone and don't need advanced registration, and then workshops for ones that do need advanced registration and have a maximum number of students that can attend. The workshops generally require some sort of like a supply kit. Sometimes they're supplies that you bring yourself and then sometimes they're supplies that the teacher provides. So the cost for these workshops can be anywhere from zero dollars extra to upwards of a hundred dollars extra depending on what all the teacher provides. The registration for these workshops is first come first served and will be open in late April. The April 2nd registration is just to register for the event itself and to purchase gala and tea tickets. All the information for registering can be found on the Costume College website registration page, which I've linked down below in the description. I will go into more detail about the cost of the whole event a little bit later in this video. In addition to the classes, there are other costume related events. These include a welcome pool party on Thursday evening, and I say pool party because it's outside near the pool area, but no one ever seems to actually go into the pool. A Friday night social, a gala on Saturday evening, and a tea on Sunday afternoon. The pool party and the Friday night social are included in your registration cost. The tea and gala dinner are additional tickets that you purchase, though after the dinner portion of the gala is finished, the room is then open for anyone to join in on dancing. Also right before the gala, the event lobby area is set up with a red carpet for anyone who wants to stroll down the carpet in their finery while others can watch and take pictures. You do not need a gala ticket to walk or to watch the red carpet. 
There are also tours that are organized through Costume College. These usually take place on Thursday, Monday, and occasionally Friday. The Monday tour takes you via coach bus to the downtown LA Fabric District. And while the other tours vary, they can include places like the museum at the Fashion Institute of Design and Merchandising, or FIDM, or Western Costume House, which provides a lot of costumes for film and television. In addition to all of this, there are shopping opportunities at the hotel itself. The marketplace opens on Friday night after the social and is filled with various vendors selling everything from fabrics to corsets to fashion plates to beautiful hats to corset supplies, gloves, hair pieces, etc. And on Sunday morning, the bargain basement opens. People can donate their unwanted costume related items like fabric, patterns, books, or even finished costumes or antiques to the bargain basement throughout the weekend. And then early Sunday morning before classes start, it opens for people to basically fill up a bag of goodies and make reasonable donation offers. These donations go towards next year's scholarships because yes, Costume College does offer need and merit based scholarships. I love the bargain basement and I found so many things there, including tons of fabric, truly Victorian patterns, and even some art prints that hang in my bedroom. According to the Costume College website, they will also be bringing back the trunk show this year, which is a great opportunity for Costume College attendees with costume related businesses who they're not able to sit at a marketplace table all weekend, but they can put up a table that just takes place for a couple of hours on Sunday evening, the trunk show, and that way it's an opportunity for these smaller businesses to sell their wares while not conflicting with the other classes and events. Beyond all the formal events, there are sometimes gatherings that pop up out on the pool deck, the restaurant, or in people's rooms. And there's also other activities to do, such as the portrait studio, where you can get professional photos taken of your costumes, and a costume exhibit where people can display other costumes that they've made in the past in a more museum-like setting. Now that I've gone over what all happens at Costume College, let's take a look at some other important information, such as cost how to get there, if you need to wear or make costumes to attend, which short answer you don't, and other tips for first time attendees. Let's start with the cost. The cost to attend starts at just the Costume College registration fee, which is $160 for CGW members or $180 for non-members. Let's do a little breakdown of all the other costs that you may or may not incur in choosing to attend. First, you have to get there. For me, it generally costs about $200 to fly round trip on Southwest to Costume College from Washington, and lifts on either end might add about $40 each to that. Then you need to have some place to stay. I know the room reservation system was going to change significantly in 2020, so I believe that it will be the new rooming list system, and I honestly have very little idea of how that works. However, the Costume College website lists the rates this year as $147 per night plus tax. I recommend sharing your room with another person to save on that cost. If you don't know someone else who's attending, the Costume College organizers can actually match you up with a roommate. You can actually have up to four people total in the room, which would really bring your costs down, but would also be incredibly crowded. Personally, I would recommend two people to a room. Of course, you can also stay elsewhere, but so many random things pop up throughout the course of the day that I really do recommend staying at the Marriott. Next, don't forget to feed yourself. <laughs> there are fridges in the room, so I will frequently hit a grocery store when I get there and get some basics. I have lucked out in the past that my longtime Costume College roommate is a high tier Marriott Rewards member, which means that we've gotten free breakfast every morning and beverages, snacks, and hors d'oeuvres all day in the concierge lounge, which is super, super awesome. This means that besides getting some additional food at the grocery store, I only ever actually go out to eat once during Costume College. However, if you do not have access to the concierge lounge, then you will want to factor in food as well, which could run you a couple hundred dollars or more depending on your eating habits. And please do not neglect your body and forget to eat at Costume College. This is super easy to do because there is so much going on, but at bare minimum, please make sure you bring a few protein bars with you so that you can get some nutrients between classes. The other main cost that you might incur would be those additional classes, events, or tours, though you can honestly have a perfectly wonderful Costume College experience without adding any of these. 
I would say at least allow yourself about like 60 to to $100 in this category, if possible. That should allow you at least two to three limited classes and hopefully a tour. If you want to add the gala dinner, it's $85 for CGW members and $95 for non-members. And the Sunday tea is $65 for members and $70 for non-members. I went to the gala my first year at Costume College, but I haven't been back since. And although I did the tea for three or four years, it does overlap with classes on Sunday. And I found that I preferred to leave my schedule more open for those. By the way, the Sunday tea does tend to sell out well in advance. I don't remember that the gala sells out, but it's been a few years now and I could be wrong. In addition to these costs would be whatever you choose to spend at the Marketplace, Bargain Basement, or Trunk Show, but of course all of that is purely optional, so that might cost you zero dollars or it might cost you hundreds of dollars depending on what you buy. So basically, as far as total cost goes for one person to attend, you're looking at anywhere from about like $700 and up. The $700 would include your base costume college registration, half of the hotel cost for four nights, plus four days and nights of food. I would say that personally, I save a lot of that food cost. So in the past, I've paid about $1,000 to attend, which includes my registration, my limited classes, fabric district tour, airfare, hotel, food, ground transportation, and even my bargain based on and marketplace purchases. That does not include the $200 to $250 I usually budget to spend in the fabric district though. In the past, registrations have opened in November, so that amount was spread over the course of about nine months, which does really help. With things being compressed this year from April through July, I can totally understand where this amount may be much more difficult to stomach. Now, let's talk about transit. If you're not one of those lucky people within driving distance to LA, you are stuck with flying to Costume College. But never fear, it is really not that bad. Unless you have something like a gold Delta Amex or some other special travel level, your main consideration in selecting your airline will be traveling with a whole bunch of luggage. I find that I often prefer to fly southwest to Costume College for this reason, since I always pack two checked bags and a rolling carry-on to Costume College, and not only does Southwest have some of the cheapest flights to begin with, but they also allow you two free checked bags. Or, if you are feeling fancy, maybe this is the time to treat yourself and upgrade to first class on your airline of choice, since first class tickets also usually allow you two free checked bags. By the way, I have done a video on how to pack for a vintage costumed trip, which I will link down below in the description, and I do plan to do another video prior to Costume College about how to pack for a costume trip like this as well. As far as where to fly into, I'd say that sort of depends. If you're just doing Costume College and not going to LA or Orange County or anything like that while you're down there, the easiest airport to use is going to be Burbank. It's nice and small, it's easy to pick up a rental car or ride share, and it's by far the closest airport to the hotel. Because it is small though, it may be more difficult to find a flight to Burbank from your home airport. The next best would probably be LAX. Personally, I hate LAX. It seems to always be under construction and it's a pain to travel into or out of, but it does get tons of flights all day. If you are getting an Uber from LAX to the hotel though, it's going to be pretty expensive. And if you're coming in anywhere near a commuter hour, so most of the day in LA, it's also going to take you quite a long time to get up there from the airport. If you're doing anything before costume college, like visiting Disneyland, which is something I've frequently done in the past, you're better off flying into John Wayne Airport or Long Beach Airport. When I have done Disney, I will Uber from one of those airports to my Disney hotel, and then before heading up to Costume College, I will pick up a rental car. That way I can stop and see things on my way up to Woodland Hills, such as like LA or the beach or whatever, and then you can drop Hertz rentals off at the hotel itself, and Enterprise Rentals is like about a mile away from the hotel. Next, a lot of the questions I received from you all were in regards to costumes, such as, do you have to wear costumes? How many costumes should you bring? If you have to sew your own costumes in order to attend, what level of sewing you need to be at to attend? Do you have to dress to the stated theme, etc.? So first off, 
you do not need to wear costumes at costume college. There are people who attend who do not dress up at all. There are also people who attend, such as myself, who have two costume changes a day and travel with about six or seven costumes for the whole weekend. Please keep in mind that if you are wearing costumes to classes, you will want to wear things that are not obtrusive. For example, they request that you don't wear hoop skirts in classes, but also please avoid large hats as well, or at least take them off during class. Also, the temperature in the hotel can really vary from classroom to classroom. Often the first floor classrooms can be fairly cold, whereas the second floor classrooms can be really warm to the point where I've actually taken off bodices in those classrooms in the past. It is nice to wear costumes to events such as the pool party, Friday social, gala, or tea, but again, it is not required. You also don't have to sew your own costumes to attend. There are classes for various levels of sewing ability, like there have even been classes on just how to use a sewing machine or basic hand stitching for people who've never even sewn before. And then there's also lots of lecture classes that have nothing at all to do with sewing. You are absolutely welcome to wear costumes that you have not made yourself, and you're also welcome to wear costumes as a very beginner sewist. No one is going to judge you for your sewing ability. You also absolutely do not have to dress for the theme. If you weren't aware, there is an overall theme at Costume College, and then each event has a theme that maybe loosely pertains to the overall theme. I'm not gonna lie, I think the overall theme this year is garbage. It's called Costuming Post-Apocalypse, Creating a New World. And I don't know about you, but after these last two years, I think we've gone through enough apocalypse-adjacent events that that is the absolute last thing that I want to think about in my costuming. They would have done so much better to theme it around something a little more escapism, like fairy tales or cottagecore or royalty or Bridgerton or literally anything else besides what they chose. So yeah, I am 110% ignoring that god-awful theme. Likewise, the pool party theme is called Apocalypse Wow. So again, that's a no for me. The Friday Night Social does not yet have a theme, so I guess we'll see what plays out there. The Saturday Night Gala's theme is Titanic, A Night to Remember, which I would normally be quite into, except that A, a whole group of us did Titanic dresses in 2018, so just two costume colleges ago, and B, I've made so many things that have gone unworn in the past couple of years that I'm not making anything specifically for costume college this year. And I was already not planning on attending the Sunday Tea, whose theme is Pride and Prejudice and Zombies, but as I hated that movie, that theme would make me not want to attend the tea anyway. So yeah, I will 100% not be dressing to any of the themes this year, but in general I'd say no more than 20% of people dress to the themes on any given year. You tend to see a little bit more of the theme-related costumes at like the pool party and the tea, but very few people follow the themes at the social or gala. One other thing to note about wearing costumes though is that they really do serve as a great icebreaker. There's a new student orientation on Friday morning, and one of the things that they'll talk about there is the costumer handshake, which is basically a costumer greeting where you go up to someone and say something along the lines of, oh my gosh, I love your dress, can I take a close look at your trim? While the other person says something similar back to you. Don't be afraid to go up to someone new and introduce yourself in that way. And while I'm on the topic of introducing yourself, just a little reminder slash rant, most of the people who attend costume college are introverts. It is very hard for all of us to talk to new people. You may very well see people clustered in little groups with people that they already know, but this does not mean that these people are not wanting to meet new people too. So don't be afraid to sidle up to someone, wait for a pause in the conversation, and introduce yourself and or compliment a costume. And please do actually introduce yourself. Costume college, or any costume situation for that matter, can really lead to a lot of face blindness, with people changing hairstyles or wigs or what have you, and with a lot of people only seeing each other once a year or less. So even if you've met that person before, it is always going to be welcomed to reintroduce yourself and to not assume that people know who you are. You'll also be given a name tag at check-in, so keeping that in a nice visible place helps too. 
I think that about covers the topic of costumes, so let's just talk about food for a moment. As I mentioned before, don't forget to eat and also to stay hydrated. There are water stations all around the classroom areas, so staying hydrated shouldn't be a problem as long as you remember to actually partake. There are a few food options in the hotel. There's the hotel restaurant, which I know is open for breakfast and dinner, and I would assume lunch as well. There's a Starbucks in the lobby of the hotel, and there's also a little like grab and go station, which is set up near the Costume College info desk and is open around lunchtime with salads, sandwiches, and snacks. You can also find light snacks in the hospitality suite. I personally love the hospitality suite, not necessarily as a food option, but as a place to sit and chat and get to know new people. One of my favorite costume college experiences of all time happened in the hospitality suite, which was an impromptu greatest showman sing-along a few years ago. Most of the food there has been donated by various volunteers, so it's generally smaller snacks like cookies or occasional hors d'oeuvres, but it's a place that I highly recommend visiting nonetheless. Based on the information on the Costume College website, it looks like this year what was the hospitality suite is now being called the lounge and is moving downstairs to a larger room on the main floor. I'm not sure if that will affect the snack situation or not. There's also P.F. Chang's directly across the street from the hotel, and I'm sure that there's many restaurant options available via DoorDash as well. Lastly, over on Instagram, which if you don't follow me over there, you should, it's at Lady Rebecca Fashions, I asked you all if you have any specific questions about Costume College, so I want to address the ones that I have not already answered in this video. And again, if you do still have questions afterwards, please leave me a comment down below and I will answer them down there. Both Jenny Stalker 2 and Alex Medina Bright asked if you can come alone as a first timer and still have fun, and the answer is absolutely. On Thursday at the pool party, they usually have a bingo card to fill out where you can find people who fit each square on the card, and it acts as a nice icebreaker. The Friday morning new student orientation is another great way to meet people who are also there for the first time. And just in case going alone still makes you nervous, I'm going to pin a comment on this video for anyone who is going for the first time to comment on so that you can hopefully connect with each other and have a friend or two by the time you get there. Similarly, Historical Bell asked if it's easy to make friends there. Even as an introvert, I would say yes. I made a handful of friends there even in just my first couple of years, and by year three I had a humongous group of awesome friends who I would run into just everywhere, all over, all weekend. It's Remarkable wanted to know if it can get a little gatekeepy on fabric or accuracy, and Jean de la Moite Valois <laughs> asked if people are generally accepting at Costume College. I think most people are very accepting, as long as you keep in mind the whole introvert thing. It can definitely feel challenging to approach people, and do keep in mind that this is the one time of year that a lot of these people get to see their costuming friends in person. But that absolutely does not mean that they don't want to make new friends too. And I don't think I've seen any instances of people putting down others based on fabric or accuracy. Especially because Costume College is not just for historical costumers, it's for all kinds of costumers, historical, cosplay, fantasy, etc. So I really don't think accuracy is that important at all. Emily King Costumes asked why should people go and what is the demographic? I think I've already answered the why part, though also if you are anything like me you'll likely make really great lifelong costuming friends there and just want to keep returning year after year. As far as the demographic goes, you have people of all ages and all races, from the occasional preteen, though people under 18 have to be accompanied by a parent, to retirees and everyone in between. It is almost entirely women who attend, though. <laughs> there are a handful of husbands who tend to be really great volunteers or who might be there just for the gala, and there are probably less than about mm, 10 to 15 male attendees who are there without a female partner out of like a few hundred people attending at least. Speaking of people attending, Lady Elisa's Finery asked how many costumers are going to attend this year. I'm not sure overall, but I do know for sure that besides myself, Noelle from Costuming Drama, Christine aka Sostein, and Stephanie Canada are all going. I'm sure there's a lot of other people going as well. Petra Jolie 17 asked any tips to do it on a budget? 
I talked about this a bit in the cost section, but the main places to save are through having one or more roommates, not going crazy when you're shopping, and by buying food at the grocery store and keeping it in the fridge. And if you are bringing your own food, there is also a microwave on the second floor by the laundry room, though in the past there haven't been individual microwaves in the rooms. My one other big cost saving tip is that one thing that I like to do is book the Monday tour to the LA Fabric District, which is usually about $35, and I'll check out of the hotel on Monday morning, load my luggage onto the coach bus, and then before the bus leaves the LA Fabric District at about 4 p.m., I'll take my luggage off of the bus and get a Lyft or an Uber from the Fabric District to LAX, since the Fabric District is way closer to it than the hotel. You'll often find other people doing the same thing, so a lot of people organize little groups on the bus ride on the way there based on airport departure time, and then share their lifts or Ubers to the airport to save even more on cost. Melanini asked, what are the little ribbon thingies and how do you get them? If you've seen photos and videos of past costume colleges, you've probably seen people wearing name tags with long strips of ribbons attached. People collect various ribbons throughout the weekend, and you can find those ribbons at the information desk, you can get them from various teachers, be given them randomly in the hallway, get them from costuming groups that you belong to online or in your area, etc. They're very fun to collect. By the way, if you haven't seen much of past costume colleges and you want to get a little preview, I know that Noelle from Costuming Drama vlogged the last one in 2019, so I will leave a link to her videos on that in the description below. Ward Galena asked, what does your typical luggage end up like? Casual versus costume ratio. I mentioned this a little bit before when I said I tend to bring six to seven costumes with me, but basically I bring very few casual clothes. I will usually have a casual outfit for flying in slash earlier in the day Thursday, one for Sunday evening, and then one for the fabric district slash flying home on Monday. By the way, do not wear costumes to the fabric district. And then sometimes one additional outfit for like late night hangouts in people's rooms. I'll also usually bring one to two swimsuits for the pool and don't forget your pajamas. For the rest of the time though, I'm wearing costumes. Make sure if you are planning on purchasing a lot at the Marketplace or Fabric District or wherever that you do leave a little extra room in your luggage for your purchases as well. And I think that about covers everything. Again, if you have any questions still, please leave a comment and I will try to answer them. And also please comment down below and let me know if you're planning on attending this year. For those of you who are first timers and want to connect with other first timers, be sure to reply to the pinned comment in particular. I hope this video was helpful for you and has you just as excited about attending as I am. If you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and click the thumbs up icon. And if you'd like to see more videos like this from me, such as how to pack for a costumed trip, please go ahead and click subscribe and the little bell icon to be notified every time I post a new video. I do post videos here on YouTube twice a week with my sewing vlogs out on Tuesdays and other random costuming content like this out on Saturdays, but I post every day over on my Instagram. So please go follow me on Instagram. That's at Lady Rebecca Fashions. And if you'd like to help support all of the work that I do on this channel, I do have a link to my Patreon and my Ko-fi down in the description below. I'd also like to give a special shout out to my Edwardian level patrons, Sharon, Julie, and Mirage. Thank you all so, so much for joining me today. I hope you all have a wonderful week, and I will see you very soon in my next video. Happy sewing!